Hello everybody, Joe Baggy Donuts here. Welcome back for an episode of Umideka. Last time we finished off episode four, uh, the main story at least. Now we just got to do tea party and uh, question mark episode, whatever whatever that's called. The, the ooh the mystery episode, and then we're we're finally done the uh, all the question arcs. Now we gotta move on to the answer, which uh, for some reason as it labeled five six seven eight instead of separate. Uh, I'm gonna, just gonna assume they, like, run one into the other, like, bop, 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 but, you know, it, it'll throw up, like, you know, separation points in there, somewhere, I hope, maybe, anyway, moving on, I don't really have too much to say, said all I had to say last time, just go in there, so this one might be a long one, so, who knows if we even get around to the, the mystery episode, or whatever, today, I just rolled out of bed, forgive me if, you know, I'm nasally and snippy and tired and not able to think properly. As I wipe my nose, because for some reason it just started dripping and my eyes are watering. Yep, just just advance the time. Just skip over the entire day that, uh, Battler, the entire day and a half. Entire two days. Almost. Cool. All right. Just jump all the way to the end. Whatever fucking Battler was running around doing, fucking chasing down Beatrice. It doesn't matter. I don't have a clue what to make of all this. Please, someone explain what happened yesterday in a way I can understand. I continued helping myself to the food in the mansion's kitchen. That massive commercial fridge had everything. I could eat and drink as much as I liked. I have more than enough to eat even if the typhoon didn't clear up for a week. With a bottle in one hand, half of which I've already drunk, I helped myself to some sliced ham. It sounds like me in front of my fridge, except I currently don't have anything in there except some like expired milk and an entire drawer full of canned coffee. I wonder just how expensive this stuff is. Man, you ingredients are out of luck. If only you had Godasan to cook you, you could have been reborn as much more incredible food. I looked at the clock. Very soon, it would be midnight. October 5th, the second day, would end. The intensity of yesterday's October 4th didn't seem real. That was how little had happened after my so-called test. Nothing was happening. No phone calls. No letters. No one was coming to see me. No one coming to attack me. Not a goddamn thing. Ah, give me back all the time and energy I wasted on being on edge. An entire day. Full 24 hours. And absolutely nothing happened. And I'm sure that nothing will continue to happen as well. Full 24 hours ago. I was called to the front of the mansion by Beatrice. There, I was given some weird test to do with determining the successor to the head or something. I gave a serious answer in my own way, but unfortunately, we just didn't seem to be getting each other. Beatrice got bent out of shape for no reason and stopped talking to me. I yelled at her to say something, but she wouldn't say a word. And I asked where Maria was, and she just told me to go to the chapel and went away. What an astounding anticlimax. Stupid as it was, it was, still a test. So at least tell me whether I passed or failed for hell's sake. What? Is she saying, good work, your results will be mailed to you later, or something? Annoying bitch. Yeah, that fucking nails Beatrice to a T. In any case, I then headed to the chapel. Both George Enneke and Jessica had been killed after failing their tests. I couldn't let Maria be killed too. Besides, I thought this could be a chance to catch whoever uh, whoever it was while they were in the process of trying to kill Maria. When I was young, Jessica often told me that I'd get in trouble if I went near the chapel. So I'd never been there, but I at least knew where it was. I couldn't sense anyone there, but there were a bundle of keys lying in front of the door. I thought this might be a message to open the door to the chapel, but after trying all the keys, I found that none of them fit. I also called Maria's name, but there was no answer whatsoever. I searched around the chapel, but there was a limit to what I could do in the pitch black with just a flashlight. 
I realized that this key bundle might have been a set of master keys, which could possibly open the door to the mansion. Finding no sign of Maria, I returned to the mansion. Yep, time to find the rest of the bodies and confirm the deaths uh, in our little character sheet. The mansion was wrapped in silence, and in a horrible stench. Still, it's pretty amazing how good humans are at adapting. Technically, that smell was still pervading the entire mansion. But I'd grown completely used to it and stopped minding it by this point. It didn't feel like anything more than an any old house where someone had burnt some meat. Goddamn fucking Kinzo smell. Old person smells bad enough, now fucking burnt old person. The stench knocked me back on first entering, but I ignored it and decided to head to the dining hall. Woo! Where? I found all those corpses that were in such a sorry state that Goto-san and Kumasawa-san has, had hesitated to speak of them in any detail. All right. Natsuhi, corpse discovered in the dining hall. Her head was half destroyed. It seems reasonable to think she was murdered with something like a powerful gun. However, the witnesses don't believe that she was killed with a gun. Ava, head half destroyed. Reasonable things, powerful gun. That uh, does. It's going to be the same for all of them. Yep. What about George? Oh, uh, we already read George. Rudolph, uh, don't believe he was killed with a gun. Rosa, corpse discovered with a head half destroyed. It seems reasonable things, she was a powerful gun. However,. Why is her shorter? Is it just... Alright. Weird. Just extra line break. Genji! I guess it might have been because of the his-her. Somehow that messed with, like, the character distance. I don't know. Strange. What was it? Genji. I have to show reasonable with some kind of gun. Cool. They were the remains of the first victims. Aunt Nazi and the rest. Each of them had half their head dramatically splattered out. And it was such a gruesome sight that even without knowing a thing about examining corpses, I could pronounce them 100% dead. And on top of that, the remaining half of their face was left like normal, so it was even easy to identify them. It really pulled out all the stops for these corpses. And finally, the bodies here weren't uh, just the six of the first Twilight. They had grown a number, now included one more. It was the, se uh, the seventh corpse. It was Maria. Ooh, Maria, how'd they get you? Uh, corpse discovered in the dining hall, unable to locate any notable external wounds. Battler speculated that it may have been some type of poisoning. The most peaceful method of inviting the most peace ugh, the, earth, the most peaceful method of inviting a person to the Golden Land. She drank Kool Aid. She was lying next to Aunt Rosa, as though sleeping alongside her. I cried. We crowed. At the death of an innocent young girl. And at the cruel way my dad and the others had died. I ran around the mansion, swinging my hat stand spear, yelling, Come out here, you bastard! You black and tans! Uh, show me how you got those medals down in Flanders. Come and fight me like a man. Sorry that I don't know my Irish uh, Republican patriotic songs d to heart, you know, down to the T. But there's absolutely no sign of anyone else. Thinking that they might be hiding somewhere and scheming to attack me from behind, I went around searching for possible hiding places. Sometimes being cautious, sometimes intentionally letting my guard down, trying all kinds of things, but in the end, not so much as a kitten appeared. Then, morning came. My tension of fatigue mixed together with my drowsiness made for the worst kind of dawn. Humans are pretty incredible. Even though I didn't know where the hell the murderer was hiding, I was prioritizing drowsiness and fatigue over worrying for my own life. By this time, I was starting to feel pretty ridiculous. I'd walked around the mansion for a full six hours until dawn broke, yelling at them to show themselves. I did a painstaking search, tired myself out, and even let my guard down. Still, no one was coming to attack me. And so at that point, I just said, screw it, do whatever you want. But it wouldn't come until the typhoon passed. I was saying on TV that it wouldn't pass until tomorrow, so I had a, a whole day to waste. 
The idea of just lazing about didn't seem very appealing. So, even though I knew it would probably make the police mad, I decided to play detective a bit. First, the dining hall, where the first murders occurred. The six who were killed in the beginning really were pitiful to look at. The weapon was probably a gun. Maybe their heads were split by something powerful, like a magnum bullet or a shotgun. That seemed like valid reasoning. In comparison, Maria, who was the seventh body, had died in a far better and cleaner way. At a glance, there were no external wounds, and it wasn't clear how she had been killed. But there were no signs that bubbles had been foaming from her mouth. And it looked like a typical death by poisoning that you might see in a TV drama. Oh, there were signs that bubbles. Cool, so she started foaming. Great. Wasn't Maria called out to the chapel and given her test there? Then why had uh, then why had she been here in the Corpseville dining hall, laying next to her mother, dead? Well, you could have just got called to the dining. I mean, not the dining hall, the chapel, so that way they could move the body. Assuming that the cause of death was poison, who gave it to her? Her clothes aren't disturbed at all. It's hard to imagine that she was forcefully pushed down and given an injection of poison. Probably better to assume that she was given a poison capsule or something and made to swallow it. That said, compared to the violent and mutilated corpses scattered about the room, Maria's corpse was far too clean. With a gun, all you need to do is pull the trigger. But poison, whether injected or made to be swallowed, would take a lot more effort. Bearing in mind the culprit's brutal nature too, I thought that Maria's death alone had clearly been given special treatment. Why was Maria alone given a sleep-like death? She was killed, so in that sense, I still felt very sorry for her, there can be no doubt about that, but for some reason, the manner of Maria's murder in particular seemed very courteous to me. Maria had her hands joined on her chest, the way they, that the dead, uh, in the way that the dead often do. Did Maria do that herself before dying? Is that usually something done by someone else after the person dies? Yes. Maria was resting at peace, as though sleeping together with her mother, whose head was half crushed. For some reason, the contrast really bugged me. There are probably a lot of mysteries surrounding Maria's death, starting with the cause. Yeah, we need to get uh, you know, toxicology, you know. Get a, get a couple tests run. More than anything else, the biggest mystery in this dining hall was the pitfalls. The pitfalls that both Uncle Krause's group and Goda had mentioned. After the six had been killed, Five more had fallen through pitfalls and had been captured. What are pitfalls? Those things that suddenly open and you fall through them, right? The floor was firmly laid with a majestic, if a bit worn out carpet. It was clearly a single piece. If pitfalls were meant to open up in it, there would be a seam in uh, that one place. And anyway, if there was some trick like a pitfall, wouldn't it creak when you walked on it? Eh, not necessarily. No matter how much I walked over and ran my hands over the carpet, I just couldn't imagine that a pitfall was hidden here. In the first place, it would be one thing if a single person had fallen, but it was a full five people. From what I could piece together from all their stories, each one of them had fallen from a different location. So at the very least, there had to be five separate places concealing pitfalls. So what does this mean? Was this room actually made with pitfalls across the entire room? So that with a single button press, you could open up a pitfall in the location of your choice? Some kind of contraption like that? Like, a uh, fucking Austin Powers, you know, Dr. Doom's... Not, not, not Dr. Doom, Dr. Evil. Dr. Evil's uh, little conference hall where you just push the button and everyone falls in. That kind of ridiculous mechanism would be surpassing even a ninja mansion. Surprising even in a ninja... Ninja? Ninja. Fortnite. But even so, if Dad and the rest heard about this, maybe they'd say, I would have put it past Grandfather. Now, you bet he'd do this. He'd make this. In any event, I didn't learn anything more than that from the dining hall. Do the pitfalls not exist? Or do they exist, but I just can't find them, amateur that I am? I can't say for sure. Since they claimed that the pitfalls were there, 
can't ignore the pitfalls even if I can't find them. The next ones to kill, to be killed, had been Jessica and George Anarchy. I'd already discovered George Anarchy when I was called out for my test. He was called out to the arbor in the Rose Garden and shot in the forehead, probably with a gun. Blech. As for Jessica, she was called to her own room on the second floor of the mansion. I found the door to her room locked. That wasn't a problem at all since I had the master keys. And inside the room was horrible. But the corpse was nothing I hadn't already familiarized myself with in the dining hall, so I'd built up a bit of an immunity. The phone receiver was dangling off the hook. Was she killed while on the phone with me? Jessica was leaning against the wall right next to it, and half her head splattered out. Alright. Poor Jessica. The corpse discovered in her own room on the second floor of the mansion have her head destroyed. It seems reasonable to think that she was murdered with something like a powerful gun. Destroyed herself with her own strike with George's counterattack type barrier. Sure! Yeah, put that on the autopsy. See what fucking eyebrows you raise at the coroner's office. As far as I could tell by looking at the scene, it looked as though she had been killed while on the phone. In that case, had the culprit been there before her eyes? I hadn't gotten that impression from Jessica's voice over the phone. I'm pretty sure Jessica said, they got me. Probably best to assume that she had already received a fatal wound at the time of the phone call. That's right. Said this. Yeah, you can't really get shot in the head and then like, oh, let me just hold the rest of my head together while I make a phone call real quick. Yeah, she definitely said that. What I could tell by looking at Jessica's corpse, there were no wounds on her other than the damage to her head. Then... She was injured seriously enough that she steeled herself for death, then died halfway through the phone call? But it feels like, with the way she was talking on the phone, she was out of danger for the time being. You shouldn't be able to have a casual conversation over the phone if the killer is right in front of you. So, did the culprit come part way through the phone call and kill her? No, that can't be right. After all, this room was locked. No, oh, like how that counts for anything. The culprit had stolen a master key from one of the victims. The fact that it was locked is meaningless. Yep, Genji was down, so he was one of the first to go. Easy to get a master key. There are no external wounds, uh, other than her head. In which case, should I assume the fatal wound she was prepared to die from and the actual wound that destroyed her head are two different events? Both of them made to the same part of the body? I mean, that's reasonable. Uh, the most likely one to go with. She'd been bopped pretty hard or something. And then, you know, the, the same area got blasted away, so unable to tell at a cursory glance. In other words, Jessica was struck severely to the head and received an incredibly bad wound. And then she called me and either lost consciousness or died while on the phone. Then the culprit came and destroyed her head for real or something. After being called to this room, Jessica was attacked by the culprit and seriously injured. And the culprit thought they killed her and went away for the time being. Then Jessica miraculously started breathing again and called me with her literal dying message. Then the culprit realized that they had failed in killing her and rushed back to deliver the final blow to Jessica, who had lost consciousness from the massive blood loss. seems to make sense, more or less, except for how Jessica was able to accurately predict the form of the final blow. There was one thing that bugged me about the phone call from Jessica. Jessica said this, She said it almost as though she had witnessed George and he being killed. But while you certainly could see the Rose Garden from the window in Jessica's room, the arbor that George Anaki had been called out to was very far away, 
you could only just make out the roof. Add on the fact that it was the night of the typhoon, it was very hard to imagine that she was able to witness everything that happened by the arbor from this window. And most important of all, Jessica left before George Anakin. So she shouldn't have known that George Anakin's test had taken uh, place in the ar taken place by the arbor. How did Jessica know that George Anakin had been killed? Then, in the course of my search in the entire mansion, I found Kyrie-san's corpse as well. How you holding up, Kyrie? Where you at? There you are. Corpse discovered in the guest room inside the mansion. There was a single hole right in the center of her forehead. It seems reasonable to think that she was shot with a gun or something. A demon stake was rammed into her forehead, but it's difficult to imagine that this was the cause of death. I didn't miss. I missed on purpose to torment her. Nye. Okay. Also, just look at look at the back of her head. You know, if there's a giant hole there, like the fucking size of a baseball, uh, she probably got shot. If there's not, she probably didn't. Well, maybe. Depends on the caliber. I'm actually not familiar with how... If, like, a standard, like, 9mm parabellum would fucking blast out the back of someone's head or just, like, fragment on hitting the skull and then just, like, fucking turn your brain to mashed potatoes. I know, like, a twenty two will just fucking bounce around and, like, absolutely stir your fucking noodle, but... Mm. I need to go watch some ballistic test videos after this. She was in an old guest room tucked away on the first floor. This was where all of us relatives used to stay before the guest house was built. The situation with Kyrie-san was just like Jessica's. She was purposely... She was probably killed during her phone call with me. The receiver was hanging untidily, and Kyrie-san was collapsed beside it. But the way she'd been killed was very different from Jessica. Her head wasn't smashed. Instead, something like a stake with an occult-like design was bared in her forehead. It was too gruesome for me, so I pulled it out. Oh, Leak. They act, they act like a plug, my guy. It's only after pulling it out that I realized that this might get me in trouble with the police later. So, even though it was probably a little late now, I lit it by Curious on side. Its tip was sharp and stained with enough blood that it must have penetrated fully to the brain. I didn't know what kind of metal it was made of, but it was about as heavy as a paperweight. Certainly, if it were stabbed all out with something like this, it might cause a terrible wound. I probably understood what the stake meant. Yeah, I know this. It's the method of killing from the fourth twilight onward in the witch's epitaph. That gouge with the stake and kill thing, probably. However, the human skull is very hard. And even with all one's strength, uh, could you really pierce through it this sharply? Uh, with a pointed, like, object like that? Yeah. You know, you put your, your full weight behind it? I, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be that hard. No. The way you reason it, the stake wasn't the cause of death. It was just used to damage the corpse after death. But, yeah, if we're, if we're talking sequence events, uh, no. She was probably killed by being shot with a gun or something, like George Anakin. And the stake was stuck into the hole left by the gun. Thinking about it that way, everything works out. But was Kirisan really killed with a gun? She had said this on the phone as well. Kirisan was under attack even though she was holed up inside a locked room. And this room actually was locked. And she said something about a golden thread-like thing flying in through the keyhole and attacking her. There's no keyhole on this door. And in fact, there were four places around Kyrie-san's corpse with holes that could have been caused by some kind of attack. But still, golden thread attacked through the keyhole? I looked at the door from Kyrie-san's perspective. It had been one of those old locks that, like you see in old mystery movies, where you can peek through the other side 
then you can understand that something might potentially have come through it. Yeah, like my door's upstairs to my bedroom and stuff. They have uh, old keyholes like that they can actually see through. And they also have like the like the glass crystal doorknob. Uh, actually locked myself in my bedroom when I first moved here because the screw on the doorknob that connects to like the uh, like I don't know what to call it the the piece that comes out that actually turns to like open and close the latch on the door uh, it was loose so when I went to turn the doorknob it just spun and I'm like oh fuck like I had just moved in here I have nothing I had, only thing I have in here is like my air mattress and like a fan. I'm like, shit, fuck. Like, am I really gonna have to call the fire department to come save me from my own bedroom because I locked the door? And it was summer at the time and really humid, so all the doors were swelling, so they were like stuck in in like the the door frame. So there was no way like of me just being able to jiggle it or something. But fortunately, fortunately, I looked in the closet. And whoever was there last had left a screwdriver. I'm like, oh, thank God. So then I used that and retightened it and I was able to get out. And then I went around my house and made sure all my doorknobs were tightened properly. So that didn't happen again. No key, though, so I don't know if it's actually possible to lock my door or if they're just there for, you know, decorative effect. But even though the doors in this mansion were old-fashioned, Locks were a uh, familiar average cylinder cycle that you could find in any normal house. In other words, there was no hole going all the way through by construction. So no matter how thin an object might have been, it's impossible to imagine that it could have penetrated through the keyhole from the outside and attacked her. Cylinder lock. Keyhole? The curious on it definitely said something like a golden thread had flown in through the keyhole and spun around and around, aiming for her, attacking her. Golden thread attacked through the keyhole. Couldn't understand what it meant at all. Wait, actually, curious -san predicted that I probably wouldn't be able to understand all this. I'm not just curious -san. Jessica had said it over the phone, too. Now, since the very beginning, from the time we talked with goda -san and Kumasawa-san and got the phone call from Uncle Krause's group, everyone had been saying the same consistent thing. Grandfather is summoning witches and demons and killing people with magic. We witnessed it happen with our very own eyes. No tricks, no illusions. No choice but to believe it. They all said it with one voice. Okay, I'm paranoid. Let me, let me just check, check my microphone real quick. Uh, hopefully this doesn't... Okay, whew! Okay, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Make sure that I'm actually recording with with the microphone I'm talking into, which, according to my waveforms, yeah, I am. But I also had plugged in, like, my PS5 controller to my computer to play some games earlier today. Well, yesterday, I guess now at this point. And in my sound settings, it had changed uh, the input device to, like, DualShock 5 controller. I know, I know I don't have that set on OBS to be what's picking up, and it's just, like, the computer's default, but, you know... I don't want it to end up being that, oh yeah, I'm recording fucking three hours of video and the microphone picking me up is like halfway across my desk and it's a little shitty, shitty fucking PlayStation controller. When that mysterious woman calling herself Beatrice appeared, even I pretty much believed that she was a real witch and might start summoning goat monsters uh, right and left. However, after being left alone for a whole day, once my feeling of tension faded completely, I had a level enough head to think that this was way too stupid to possibly be true. In that extraordinary situation where their lives were exposed to danger, did they just lose their heads a little and mistakenly think that a witch was attacking them with magic? But multiple people testified to the same effect, and on top of that, none of their opinions contradicted one another. If it had been a single person's statement, I might be able to suspect that they had just uh, didn't see what they... I might be able to suspect that they just didn't see what they thought they saw. But doing that now is pretty difficult. Then, 
right next to the back door, found Uncle Krauss with his head half destroyed. Even though he'd escaped the dungeon of Kuadorian. All right, Krauss, how you holding up? Krauss discovered in the vicinity of the mansion's back entrance, his head was half destroyed. It seemed reasonable to think that he was murdered with something like a powerful gun. A demon stick was rammed into the destroyed portion of his head. Gross! No one can escape the Chester's golden arrows. Also, but Kyrie had the fucking stake in her head. Just, just reusing the fucking same Twilight over and over and be like, ah, it's good enough. Somehow made it out of the secret underground passage and all the way here, he was killed. Buried into a gruesome cross section of his half-destroyed head was a stake with an occult design, just like the one that had been driven into Kyrie-san's forehead. And in this situation, it's very hard to imagine that this stake was the murder weapon. He was killed with a powerful gun like the six in the dining hall. And after death, he was stuck with a stake like Kyrie-san. One of the golden threads that Kyrie-san spoke of uh, attacked Uncle Krauss too. Uh... Does there exist some kind of tool, like an endoscope? Is that the thing that you fucking stick up your butt with a camera on it for like your colonoscopy? Which is very thin, but can be moved about at will? And that can also attack people? No way. Never heard of anything like that. Yeah, that's like some fucking Area 51 Nevada shit. Like some Groom Lake. But even so, if I voiced that suspicion to one of my relatives, perhaps they would say, I wouldn't, put, I wouldn't put it past Grandfather to make one. Since I can't refute the existence of a golden thread, X, that can be moved at will and attack people, my only option is to either accept this completely incomprehensible weapon, or else to accept that these murders were committed with magic. To find the next corpse, I had to go out through the back door and search around outside a bit. Next would be Nanjo, yeah? Behind the mansion, in the wild, uh, grown bushes that were almost swallowed up by the forest, there was something like an old well. Right next to it were the corpses of Dr. Nanjo and Shannon Chan. Do -do 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 -do. Hey, Shannon, what's good? Corpse discovered behind the mansion, her head was half destroyed. It seemed reasonable to think that she was shot with a gun or something, a demon stake lying next to the corpse. The witnesses understood one thing at least. It was not the stake that killed her. Whoever was in charge of the the fucking stake twilights slacking off severely. Nanjo had up destroyed, seemed reasonable to shot with a gun or something, demon stake was lying next to the corpse. Both corpses had their heads smashed, and there was a stake lying right next to each of their destroyed heads, though they weren't stuck in. All of the corpses were atrocious, but having looked directly at Shannon Chan's lovely face, half of which was blown off, was very painful. Then, there was the well, inside which, I was told, was a secret underground passage to the mysterious mansion, Kuadorian. At this time, I was beginning to think that Beatrice and her accomplices They've used this underground passage to leave for Kuadorian. There was prop, uh, there were supposedly ten or more of these guys, and I hadn't seen hide nor hair of any of them. And my th voice is just gonna stop working. Coffee stained me. It made a lot of sense to think that they'd already escaped somewhere else. Yeah, they got in their little submarine and fucking scooted out below the waves. They had this typhoon to contend with, but they couldn't go out to sea. Same for the forest. There was no way they could traverse such a deep, uncultivated forest on foot. N no Uh, it's called just get a good pair of boots and some, like, hiking sticks. You know, that you see all the, you know, all the dads on vacation that are really into hiking have. You know, like the ski poles, but you just use them for balance. 
In that case, there was only one place for them to go. The mysterious hidden mansion, Kodorian. The secret underground passage at the bottom of the well. But this time, I entirely lost my fear of being killed if I happened to come across the enemy. Screwing with me like this. This time I'll march into your mansion. Or is like the cover to the well grated down? Like, or the grate is like bolted down. The old well had a firm cover on it. The cover was an iron grill. The gaps between the bars were perhaps 20 centimeters square. You could peer inside, but it really wasn't something a human could pass through. If I hadn't known better, I would have just thought uh, I wouldn't have thought it to be anything more than a simple cover to protect against falling in. But from what Kiryu san had told me, I knew that it had been made to prevent intruders from entering the secret underground passage at the bottom. But the cover was fixed in place extremely firmly. No matter how much I pushed or pulled, I couldn't even get closer to removing it. I couldn't find any obvious lock. Maybe it was sealed by some mechanism. But no matter how much I investigated it, I couldn't find anything to release it. The underground passage in this well is the biggest piece of information I have that Curious on Gamut her last moments trying to tell me about. Uh, with your hat stand? I had an idea where to get one. Because I'd seen various tools in the gardening shed when we locked Gota san and Kumasawa san in there. But the shutter to the gardening shed was locked. On top of that, the key was with Gota san, who was inside, dead. In other words, this gardening storehouse was a locked room. There was no way to open it from the outside. In that case, I would have to break the shutter. I wonder if there's a tool for that somewhere. I felt like I was going in circles. Yeah, big, big point and click adventure vibes right now. Got to get a tool to, you know, use to get into another fucking room to get a different tool, yada yada. Then, while searching for that, I learned that the source of the stench that had been permeating the mansion this whole time was the underground boiler room. Well, there's, we know there's an axe in there. The boiler room was dimly lit, humid, had a terrible stench. And on top of that, it was incredibly creepy. But there were several large tools there, and I was able to find a fire hatchet and a massive, and a massive bolt cutter. I would say like a pair or a set, you know, of, of bolt cutters. And grandfather's corpse too. Well done, Kinzo. Discovered as a burnt corpse from the incinerator in the underground boiler room. There are no signs that he fought to get out of the incinerator. It seems reasonable to think that he was burned after he was murdered. Dust to dust, ashes to ashes. The dead to the dead. Now, strictly speaking, I should probably say that I found the burnt corpse of a person who was probably grandfather. Someone's corpse had been stuffed into the blazing fires of the boiler. However, by coincidence, I was able to notice the number of toes on the corpse. Both feet had six toes. Yeah, actually, I might have heard that from Dad at some point long ago. Something about Grandfather having polydactyly, uh, with extra toes. It's apparently an old Ushermiya tradition for people with extra fingers or toes to be treated as a good omen, saying that they had good fortune or something. And that's why Grandfather was selected to be the next head, or something along those lines. Must be tough to get shoes. Well, I suppose not for him. He probably has all his shoes, like, made at a cobbler. You know, custom. Because he's rich. But I wonder if I can be certain that this is Grandfather's body just from the number of toes. After all, Grandfather was supposed to be the leader of uh, the group of culprits. I don't have a clue why he'd be dead and stuffed in a boiler in a place like this. A mysterious corpse, burning and belching out a terrible stench amid the flames. If it really was Grandfather... Did that mean that the leader of the group of culprit culprits wasn't Grandfather, but that but that Beatrice, after all? I got confused by the end of that sentence, but it's fine. I'm not confused anymore. Will I be confused later? Yes. That's a guarantee. Grandfather was used because he was convenient and was thrown away at the end? 
Unfortunately, it didn't look like I'd be given the chance to hear Grandfather's explanation. Now that I attained the tools, I thought about immediately taking on the cover to the well, but I decided to break the shutter of the gardening shed first. I had plenty of time to kill anyway. Thought I should check on the condition of Goda-san and Kumasawa-san's corpses. I hit the shutter with the hatchet, breaking into it. Stuck the bolt cutters into the crack, and scissored it around, opening a hole. And I came face to face with Godasan and Kumasawa-san's corpses once more. Goda, corpse discovered in the Rosegarden storehouse, is uh. That that's a word. I know it's like hypothetical, you know. But I've never seen it used as a verb, like in past tense. Hypothesized. There we go. That's a lie. I have seen it. And I've heard it. I've just, you know, it didn't click for some reason. It is hypothesized that he was shot in the forehead and then strung up by his neck. They themselves put their necks in the nooses. It's an interesting experience to try on that occasion. A little autoerotic asphyxiation? All right, Battler. You do you, my guy. You know, just be careful. Corpse discovered in the Rose Garden storehouse. It is uh, hypothesized that she was shot in the forehead and then strung up by her neck. As long as a locked room could be constructed, anything would have sufficed. As a result, I learned some new facts. First, they did not die by being hanged. Their feet were solidly on the floor, and both their foreheads showed signs that they had been shot with a gun. When I thought about what a normal noose was like, the rope seemed considerably on the long side. On top of that, the length was different on each to match the height of each person. In other words, the lengths had been adjusted so that both Goda-san, who was tall, and Kumasawa-san, who was short, had their feet solidly, but barely, on the ground. So that way you can get around the strangulation. Well, not necessarily. If, it, if it's so tight that they can't get it off, depending on like what kind of knot it is, you know, you could still say that they died by being choked. Asphyxiation, but... Also, while the ropes carried both of their weights as their heads lolled, Lolled. Trollolololol. Uh, both of them had some slack below their knees. This meant that they stood upright with these nooses around their necks. There'd be some extra length. In other words, these ropes were a bit unsuitable to hang someone with. The direct cause of death was probably the shot to the head. It was gruesome. Their insides were still dripping out from these deep holes, staining their faces a deep red. Then, they were hung up by their necks and left on display. That probably makes the most sense. They were shot with a gun. They probably, uh... They would probably have been lying down on the floor. If that had been the case, you, would have, uh, you wouldn't have been able to tell that they were dead by peeking through the window. A mountain of stuff would have gotten in the way, so if they had been lying down, they would have been hidden. To make the deaths of these two known to the rest of us who couldn't get inside. They had to hang them like this so we could tell from the outside. Was that to get back at us for thinking that the two of them would surely be safe if we left the key with them? I wonder where the shutter key we gave Godasan, which should have ensured their safety, is now. That key was in his trouser pocket. The gardening shed key had been kindly left there, but even the tag was still attached. In other words, the gardening storehouse was a locked room after all. That gave rise to another question. Because this hanging was inexplicable, if they didn't commit suicide, then the nooses were set up by the culprit. It might have been possible to shoot them through the window, but I really can't imagine that someone could have tied two ropes to the beams from the outside. And on top of that, they would have had to be... They would have had to have... They would have had to lift up the heavy corpses. There's just no way. In other words, to do all of this, they would have had to go inside. But the key was in Godasan's pocket, and the shutter was still locked. In other words, 
<clears throat> the gardening storehouse was a locked room. How fun. Gurusan had said that there was only one key for the shutter. It's possible there was a copy, and that the culprit was in possession of it? If we're allowed to theorize that there was actually multiple gardening storehouse keys, and that Gurusan just didn't know about them, then this isn't even close to a locked room. But why is it that, despite the fact that almost all of the other corpses were shot to death and left almost completely alone, these two corpses alone were intentionally hoisted up? Couldn't help but feel something a bit odd about that. Assuming that the mystery corpse in the boiler room was Grandfather, the deaths of 16 people had now been confirmed. There were 18 people on this island. There's me and 16 corpses. Kennegan's corpse was the only one I hadn't been able to confirm yet. Yeah, he's sitting at the bottom of the well. According to Kiri, son, he had been killed while climbing out of the well, fell down into it. So with the well closed up like this, it was impossible to check. I tried shining a flashlight through the bars, down to the darkness into the depths of the well. It seemed that the jet black darkness had no intention of showing me its innermost depths with this inadequate light. It looked like I'd have to break the bars after all. Using the hatchets and the things I've dragged out of the boiler room in the gardening shed, I tried breaking the cover of the well. Don't, don't swing the hatchet at it. But the metal bars were extraordinarily sturdy. Breaking them wasn't easy. I hit them with the hatchet over and over until my hands started feeling weird. I eventually gave up on breaking them. Your best chance is to take the bolt cutters and... If possible, like, get some, like, metal tubing or something from the gardening shed, stick them on the end so you get more leverage, and try to, try to cut them? Or, like, try to cut, like, the parts where they're affixed to, like, the, the concrete, where there's probably, like, uh, I don't know, like, some kind of screws, or, like, tab or something, I don't know. It was impossible. If they were at least wood, I might have been able to break them. But this is metal. Yeah, there's no way you can slice through metal bars like butter with a human strength. I didn't even begin to understand the story about how Cannon couldn't cut through the metal bars. She told me that a light like a red laser beam grew out of his arm, that he used it to slice through the metal bars like a knife through butter. Cutting through metal bars like butter? And what's with that red laser beam? Does that mean he's stuck in a burner or something? That he uses to burn through the bars? Oh yeah, Cannon's just carrying around his fucking acetylene torch like a normal person. Just, uh, still, just what kind of laser could cut through metal bars like butter? Sounds exactly like one of those kinds of laser beams that, show up, uh, that shows up in those robot anime I loved as a kid. Does stuff like that actually exist? How did Cannon get that laser beam? As much as I want to ask him, he's already been killed. Plus, even his corpse is now at the bottom of the well, beyond its cover. If Cannon couldn't have managed to slice through those metal bars, I'm sure he could handle this metal cover in a single swing. Now it feels like the locked room just now, with Godasan locked inside the gardening storehouse holding the keys. Only one person can open the door, but they're locked inside. If only had the power of Kanekuns, I could do something about this cover myself. Just who is Kanekun? Couldn't really be an inhuman being capable of using the strange power, right? Even Kiryasan told me to believe in witches, and I've also met an insane woman calling herself one. Could Kanekun possibly be a human on the witch side? Or else, the culprit? Ugh, what the heck? I'm gonna start treating him like the culprit just because I can't find his corpse. Throwing us a bone. Yep, Cannon didn't do it. Yeah, 
9人目の犠牲者というわけだ Thanks, ビエト死体がない以上カノン君が死亡しているとは断言できないトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥそなたは、ここまでのことを知っているのですかそなたは、ここまでのことを知っているのですかそなたは、ここまでのことを知っているのですかそなたは、ここまでのことを知っているのですか Even that testimony that something gold had flown around the dining hall during the first six murders. The two might have been the same weapon. Then there was the locked room murder of the gardening shed and the laser beam that could cut through metal bars. That wasn't all. There was much, much more. Like the group of goat monsters. The talk of a witch who could create pitfalls just by snapping her fingers, or rabbit like demons that had fired golden threads. I think there were more. Each and every one of them was ridiculous. Couldn't possibly accept it. I was forced to suspect that there was some kind of trick or mistake. Why in the world had everyone spoken with one voice, saying the same thing without contradictions in their testimony? It's not only the magic. Maria's mysterious death. Jessica somehow knowing that George Anakin had been killed. The mysterious burnt corpse that I couldn't confirm actually belonged to my piece of shit grandfather. More and more. All stuff I just don't get. I tilted the bottle and glugged it down noisily. I didn't have a clue what was going on. After dinner last night, we kids were shooed out of the mansion and told to go back to the guest house. Then there was a massacre in the dining hall. Kiri san and the rest were dropped through pitfalls and captured. Then Chiska and George Enki were called out for a test or whatever and killed. Kyrie's group managed to escape the dungeon somehow, but all of them were killed in the end. And at the very, very end, even Maria was killed, leaving me all alone. In short, I did nothing except、uh, be locked up in the guest house. During that time, a huge incident had occurred and ended before I knew it. What could I call it except incomprehensible? I don't have a clue anymore. No, what am I? ただの食欲魔人なんだぜ俺だけ生き残らせるつもりかよとっとと姿を現して殺しに来いってんだもう面倒だからこっちからは探さねえぞそっちから正体を見せやがるってんだ俺は逃げも隠れもしねえぞ矢でも鉄砲でも持ってきやがれ I haven't had any sleep since yesterday And I'm tired as all get out. You want to kill me? Be my guest. I decided to return to the guest house and boldly rest on the bed. As I exited the kitchen and passed through the lobby, the portrait of the witch came to view. The big clock did too. At that very moment, it was exactly midnight. Come on out, Beatrice. At the sound of the bell, Claiming that it was midnight, rang out. As I listened, I looked up at Beatrice's portrait. Exactly 24 hours ago, I met you. What were you trying to say to me? Where did you go? Just who in the world are you? Golden Witch Beatrice. And I solved a single one of the riddles surrounding you. Show yourself. And fight with me! In, in, in the fighting game. Then, the witch showed herself. Like a guest of honor finally appearing, she showed herself on the landing at the top of the big staircase. You're a good guy. 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 You're
退屈させられてたところだぜそうだ丸一日を与えた人間側の権利行使は十分ああ退屈だったんでな存分にやらせてもらったぜヘンジは良い子まであったなイエヘンジの名はお前が口にするんじゃねえあれは奇跡によって現れ自らを生贄にしてそなたに絶対の勝利の執念を与えたエンジェの名を口にするなあの無残な死はそなたにとって必要なものだあの死を見なければそなたは本気にならぬ、mm -hmm. エンジェのサチウス君らを自覚しなければ I got some fucking skin in the game そなたに勝利の執念は生まれない Not that he didn't before, but you know, a little, a little more meaningful. Engine no cuchini sirna to it. Tumari, Hitsuona ikenie that to you, Wakita. So de nakteva. Sonata ni warawa or koros hodo no ikariwa umare. Warawa to sonata no kiko ga kuzusu. Deli castel kyome. Korewa koma dewa naiwa. キリフだと呼ぶがふさわしい。コマはどれほど活躍しようと。万丈を離れることもしかし、キリフだ。どんな力を発揮しようと。Uh, okay. キレは確実に捨てられる。エンジン。そなたにとって実に良きキリフだだったのエンジェの名を口にするんじゃねえ At Battler's outburst of rage, Beto finally stopped talking. What is this? I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. お前をぶっ倒す、mm -hmm. 魔女も魔法も幻想も妄想も全て俺がぶっ飛ばすさあ追っ始めようぜもう二度とごまかさせないゲーム再開だぜお前という嘘っぱちを追う魔女のベールを俺が引き裂いてやる長いわ素直に一言ファキンパッミカルジーズクライスああその言葉をお望みなら言ってやるさ俺が聞いてやるお前の望みで最初で最後のものだ感謝するお前をお前を殺すウィーならばよし始めようぞバトラーさあ魔女狩りの時間だわらわを追ってみろ追い詰めてみろ殺してみろわらわはそなたに期待している妹の最後がそなたに何を与えたのかそれをわらわに見せてみよう Man, you just love pushing his buttons, don't you? Jota! I then played him like a pianist. That looks cry burn the world with a white light. And when, one, uh, and when one's eyes were opened to that brilliant light, the two of them could be seen in the rose garden. Hey, Rose Garden. Sente wa dochira kara. Ore da. Isagios. Alright, throw some blue at us. Rose Garden, where beautiful rose petals danced. The color of those rose petals was red. Was that a proof? Or simply a claim that the two of them were facing each other in this beautiful rose garden? Was the red and only truth? That must be why the roses are red. But in the language of flowers, roses are passion, not truth. The flower of truth is a forget me not. That flower is blue. よかろうそなたのお手並みを拝見しよう来い行くぜすでに宣言済みだがもう一度言うこいつは
シュメン、ヘルスウォーデ。後ろ見は金蔵はすでに死亡している。よって。島の本当の人数は17人。そこに未知の人物X break through all the murders in episode 1 by supposing an unknown person X. Furthermore, it seems impossible to explain the mystery of Kinzo's evaporation from the locked room sealed by the receipt. By making a bold assumption that Kinzo wasn't there from the beginning. Unless Beato countered this with the red truth, the Witch of Illusions of episode 1 would be completely smashed. Blue truth was valid. Wedge of Blue Truth that Battler had released stabbed right into the top of Beato's left foot. Was the red blood that poured out from there the fence in the Red Truth? Beato shut one of her eyes tight, enduring the unbearable pain from the Wedge of Blue Truth that denied her. I mean, there's like the chain locked room. Don't like a wiggling like that. Blue Wedge piercing Beuto shook. She was resisting, fighting to push it out. Yep. Oh, counter? <laughs> Nice little sizzle. Pito must be well marbled. The witch had been gradually losing its brilliance. It seemed as though it was about to come out. It regained its strong blue again thanks to Battler's additional blue truth, and dug into Beato again, eating into her foot. Beato let out a moan of anguish at the pain of him. <laughs> Also, uh, this track is a fucking bop. まだ答えない。まだだ。まだだ。さらに続けて、6連結の連鎖密室。ローザおばさんとマリアの殺人。うん。親父たちのホールでの死亡。クラスオのすべてはエヴァおばさんを犯人に仮定することで説明可能だ
ゲストハウスの階段を降りてはおらぬ窓から飛び去ったのだ I mean you can call jumping and falling flying if you want In the final stages of the third game George suddenly vanished from the second floor of the guest room the guest house Eva, who had been on the first floor, claimed that no one had come downstairs. But if, as the Blue Truth claimed, she had carried Krauss and Nazi's corpses outside, there was the possibility that George had, could have secretly gone downstairs during that gap of time and escaped. But by adding on to the Red Truth, Ito had disproven that. To go outside without going down the stairs to the first floor, he would have had to leave by the window. But all the windows were locked from the inside. <laughs> お前の言葉通りだぞ窓から飛び去ったんだろ下へ飛び降りても芝生じゃわからないしあの大雨だ Yeah, the rain would have just washed all the mud back over 多少の痕跡なんて消えちまう赤き真実を繰り返す外部へ通ずる窓も扉もすべて内側より施錠されていたぞ Alright,、uh, Dave locked it after the fact しかもそれらの施錠はすべて外側からは不可能ジョージには施錠するすべはない青き真実を繰り返す当時の俺も言っているぜならばジョージの兄貴が窓より脱出後誰かがそれを施錠すればいい何も難しいことはないこの程度で It's like sure we don't have a motive for why anyone would lie about it but Ito couldn't remove the blue wedge that was buried into her foot. The fake witch was burned more and more by the strong blue. Daisan's game までの全てにおいて青き真実は未だ揺るがないならばお前が魔女であることを証明する唯一のゲームは今回の第4のゲームだけだ Yeah, some real wacky shit happened this time around. わらわが赤き真実にて反撃していない以上そういうことになるこの度のゲームでのみ魔女を証明せねばなるまいなよかろう存分に来るがよ食堂のロビングをついて不審な点はない18人目の X が銃を乱射してみんなを殺して落とし穴についたのだ実際に落とし穴が本当に隠されていた可能性もあるし、切り絵さんの仮説である。瞬時に混沌させる毒屋の発射装置 X の過程でも説明可能。ジョージの兄貴、ジェシカ、そして地下牢から脱出したメンバーの殺害も、食堂と同じで銃によるもの。いや、不審な点はない。Their deaths are fair, fairly simple。だが分かってるぜ。反撃があるんだ。Yeah, let's hear it. ソナタの最大の刃である18人目の X は金蔵がすでに死んでいるとの仮説に立脚しているそう来ることはわらわも分かっていただから金蔵を書斎より出したその金蔵を親族会議の全員が迎えたぞ親族会議に居合わせた全員が金蔵の存在を認めたそうだなだがじい様はずっと視線をさまよって寝込んでいた重病人ってことになってるぜやつれてて別人に見えちまってもみんな気にしないかもなイエッオレはコーカイスそのじい様は別人の替え玉だ親族たちがじい様と見間違えた別人だならばわらわはこう返すすべての人物は後ろ宮金蔵を見間違わない。They didn't get a good look at him. いかなる変装であったとしても、後ろ宮金蔵を見間違わない。ならばこう返す。お前は第一のゲーム時では5本以上存在することになっていたマスターキーの本数を第二以後のゲームの設定変更を行っている。Okay. 同じことだ。第4のゲームにおいて金蔵の生死の設定が変更されている可能性があるよって第4のゲームの金蔵の存在をもって
それ以前のゲームでの金蔵の存在を証明することにはならないよって食堂での6人殺しはじい様が自ら執行したと仮定しても何の矛盾も生じないならばこう返そうぞ4つのゲーム開始時の金蔵の静止設定は全て同一である OK he could have rapidly deteriorated 第4のゲームのみ設定が異なることはない That's how it is when people are on their deathbed. They can be fine like one instant, and then you come back the next day and they're. You know, they, they're, they're already gone. They just take a fucking nosedive sharp. Kinzo is the fucking ultimate sin. Goddamn granddad wavered into vision. <laughs> Trying to be some kind of knight, blocking the way between me and Beato. <laughs> Goddamn, <laughs> tier three sub. No, giant Kinzo. Ah. Um. Is is the Ushermiya family gold? The fucking Rhine gold? Hello, Fafnir. Jesus Christ. Kinzo's jet black cape spread as though it would swallow the world, becoming the snout of a vast black dragon, which came at me, trying to swallow me in one mouthful. As I faced the roaring of the black dragon, I, I calmed my breathing and closed my eyes lightly. <laughs> See, you can tell it's Kinzo because it has the same feel. <laughs> I mean, do be looking pretty incorporeal, my guy. Black Dragon's vast mouth, its snout, its bangs, threatened to swallow Battler whole. In that instant, Battler suddenly opened his eyes. ありがとうよ、ベアトリーチェ。お前の第三の言語。俺の反撃の足がかりとなる。何？あばよ、クソジジイ。こいつで終わかれだぜ。俺は金蔵死亡説が第四のゲームでも主張できる根拠として、以下
異なる複数の名前を持つ人物は存在しないでできんな Man's goldsmith. Yes, I can in Emerina. So, GG. Conscious, you know. Oh, my. Yat to Sinet and maybe stay dead this time. Koitsuga Indoda. Kratek Tabarina. We show me a Kinzo as the Nishibo state. And I knew Kinzo was in his place. Anta Kinodoka. Yeah. So no Staiga meets Karabai. It's more Mariakeda. それは死後が経過している死体であることを悟られないための工作なのさそしてその名を誰かが受け継いだ以上の仮説でてめえは死亡しているにもかかわらず金蔵は親族会議に登場することができるどうだよこれだセッカンメイトだ Several dozen blue stakes bored into Kinzo's ghost. The terrible destructive power would never permit the ghost to recover. Nah, that, that man's going to fucking hell. No peace for him. <laughs> Only the fucking blackest pit of Tartarus for his fucking sorry ass. Dispersed along with the shadow of the black dragon, his gold flower petal scattered. Ushirumiya Kinzo became a gold colored cyclone and disappeared. Even after death, he fought for the sake of the woman he loved. And love and madness were, without a doubt, the real thing. Yuto still couldn't pull out the blue wedge that pierced her foot. Yuto realized that she was on the verge of death. All right, one of the tables is going to turn here. It's never done this well for Battler for long. ならばこのせ。ならばわらわを殺してみせよ。逃げも隠れもせぬ。今や避けることを叶わぬ。ゴイ。後ろ見やバトラー。お、金蔵死亡説による18人目の最後のマリアを全て18人目の Like a pin cushion. <laughs> Several blue stakes were driven into Beatrice, who could not dodge, skewering her. Beato grabbed the stakes, trying to pull them out somehow. <laughs> Now, 
痛いのは嫌だ辛いのは嫌だ I don't feel too good now, does it? With both hands, Buto firmly grasped one of the blue stakes. Naturally, the power of the blue truth to deny witches burned her hands. Unable even to hide her tears at the pain, Buto howled and tried to pull the stakes out with all her might. Alright, alright, Beatrice, who's gonna come in with the assist for you? これが最後の反撃。なら<笑> Certainly, Rosa had witnessed gold butterflies gather and fix a marshmallow by the miracle of magic. <laughs> it's just a shitty marshmallow thing candy they were selling at a uh, selling at the grocery store checkout. Not unreasonable to you know have those on hand, you know, getting ready for Halloween. Rosa, one信憑性がないであろう。だから我らはその目撃者を極限まで増やしたのだ。それこそが今回のゲームよ。我が剣族たちの召喚、そして魔法による虐殺。それらの全てを大勢の人間たちに目撃させた。それこそが我が魔法の
私には万一の奇跡も絶対にないいや奇跡も絶対もないが正しいのか I, I haven't been paying attention to what、uh, what you know pronoun Beatrice normally uses for herself when she's talking if, if she uses well what even would Beatrice use I know, I know Watashi is like pretty gender neutral. I, I doubt. I think I would have picked up if Beatrice was an ore kind of girl.、Uh, Boku would also be a little eyebrow raising, but who knows? Not the weirdest thing. I looked into Battler's eyes. It was not me inside them. Reflected in those eyes were the figures of the little sister waiting for his return and the family he had to bring back to her. He no longer sees me, even as an individual. Of course he doesn't. In the very beginning, he had been fighting to deny the individual I am. Yep, just an obstacle cool to fucking get over. <sighs> And then he had to go and ruin it. Yep. But you let your true nature show and you fucked it all up. Got any get out of jail free cards? Run through with several blue stakes, Beato was still in a standing position, skewered to the ground many times over. Unable even to fall over because of this, and still looking up into the sky, she was sewn in place. Tragic form might have been a fitting end. For the cruel witch who had endlessly toyed with 18 people's lives and who had killed constantly for hundreds and thousands of years. Gently, as though someone was mourning for something, rain began to fall. Amid that rain, Pieto was exposed to the elements, crucified. Beato. グーの根も出ぬわまだだろお前はこの程度で終わる女じゃねえだろ。じゃあ、ちょっとロールオーバー。無茶を言う。この姿がどう見たら終わっていないように。え、まあ、you <笑> いっちまえよ。お前の青き真実で異常により魔女は存在しないって言っちまえよ。その一撃で私の息の根を止めてしまえ。ダメだな。おお。Where さらせというのかすでに決着はついておろうにたてよ俺たちの殴り合いはまだ終わってないまだとだいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやい
わらわなどこの場に打ち捨てていけ俺は言ったはずだ逃げないそしてお前を逃がさないとな<笑>お前は yeah, that still hasn't been answered. そして一体何が望みだったんだそれが知りたくない who's, who's the one the mask そなたのお箱でも試せばよいいいではないかただの妄想幻想それでいいではないか全然ダメだぜ俺はお前を逃がさない<笑>俺はお前をこのまま逃がしてなるもんかお前をうやむやにしたまま、幻想の暗闇に逃げ帰らせばしない。打ち破る。完全にな。We need a culprit. だから立て。弱々しいふりなんかするな。お前はまだなんてか隠してる。俺にはわかる。<笑>なぜ。おとなしく見逃してくれぬのか。After all you've done? Fuck no. おやじを、おふくろを、そしてエンゼを。いとこのみんなや親族のみんなをそして使用人のみんなを Get fucking dragged kicking and screaming out into the light. お前はあれだけもてあそんで殺したその非道を俺は絶対に忘れない許さない俺の肩にはよまだエンジェの腕の感触が残ってるんだよ俺はお前の非道を許さないだからそんなことで逃がさない。バトルズ eyes burned with the flames of hatred. The days when I could earn his passion by appearing frail are now a matter of the distant past. Having been tricked once, Battler will never sympathize with me again. Okami to Hitsuji no puzzle, do Koroka. Koreja. Okami Shone. Do Sreba in the. You dug your own grave here. But do Sreba. マキオを認めるためだけに無限に戦うの。無限の魔女にふさわしき無限の豪華。バトラリ勝利を与えぬために無限に嫌がらせを繰り返すのもまた。悲しいな。こんなのが無限の魔法なのか。魔女たちに無限に玩具にされるなんてもう引き当た価値はなく引き分け終了もないならば我らを解放してくれる結末は魔女の道に落ちた時から<笑> 悪魔と契約をしたその日から末路は悲劇であるとどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたどうしたど
そうさ俺は前回お前に一度情けをもらってたんじゃねえかだからそのカリボンこれで返す俺の敵、oh, so、俺の黄金の魔女ディアトリーチェまだ抜けてないぜ18人目の X の青き真実が抜けていないそなたの副賞要求の一つに応じるそなたの推理通り全ゲームの開始時に金蔵はすでに死んでいるしかしならばつまりは一人を抜かせばよいことわらわはこれまでこの島には19人以上の人間は存在しないと宣言してきたそれを金蔵の分一人減らす、uh -oh. この島には18人以上の人間は存在しない以上つまり18人目を含めるぞつまり18人目の X は存在しないこれは全ゲームに共通することだ。Well, やっぱりまだとんでもねえ奥の手を隠してやがったぜ17人しか人間のいない島が18人と偽られてきたそれが1人減って17人になりようやく正しい数になったってわけだこれでお前をぶち抜いていたくさびが抜かれたな戦いはゼロから仕切り直しってわけだ、yep. Blue wedge that had sewn Beato in place broke apart. There was no longer anything piercing Beato. The scars on her body had disappeared completely. There, just as Battler had hoped for, stood the imposing figure of the golden witch who ruled Rokinjima. ゲームをせぬ。隠れもせぬ。そなたが不甲斐ないならばこの勝負。この場にて決着してくれようぞ。わらわの譲り勝利に出た教師なかったことを永遠に後悔させてくれる。さあ。第一のゲームからだ。オ
Yeah, the, the first game was pretty sloppy just in general. Okay. Odd thing for him to do? It was an accident. カノン君は他殺されたつまり他殺ではないんだこれは第三のゲームの連鎖密室と同じなのさカノン君は自殺でも他殺でもない理由で死亡したんだ状況は不明だが事故死というわけさ胸に杭がぶち込まれて死んで
We will be killed and made to suffer over and over. Anjay will be burdened with a future of isolation. はい、霊廃堂の扉がオートロックだった可能性 6人の中に犯人がいて、5人を殺し、死んだふりをしていた。Okay. And then snuck out. Yeah. Yeah, it wrong. Tremendous exchange of red and blue truth. Stakes and wedges of blue truth that I sent flying darted at Beato one after another. One after another, Beato cut them down with a red truth, a red treasured sword, knocking them out of the air. But the blood she had lost from the first game was probably awful. This intense exercise was putting her under even greater strain. I could see her breath growing ragged. That's why I can't hold back now. I'll corner that witch. This time, I'll break through her. Mada does it. Ah, yeah, give us some fucking screwball theories. Kareraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniataraniatara
ならばあのカノンは何者だというのかカノン君の死亡は赤で宣言済みならば生きているわけがないよって襲われた彼らがカノン君と誤認するような何者かの変装の可能性がある彼らは異なる人物カノンと誤認することは絶対にないならば金蔵の名の世襲と同じにカノンの名が世襲された可能性がある Sure, they're furniture after all, and that's a fake name anyway. カノン君が殺され別の人物がその名を受け継ぎ彼らを襲ったと仮定できる Bonk. Sound like a watermelon being squashed ring out. The blue wedge was buried deep into Beato's left flank. Sound like she felt that one. Maybe it hit her in a bad spot. After leaning over and moaning for a while, she laughed it off as though trying to make it seem like no big deal. Yeah, I can tell. That must have hurt like a bitch. Uh, what kind of meat is the flank? I, I think it's like kind of your back on the side. Ugh. Oh, sure, you're loving it. Just say it, say it enough and you'll fool yourself. When Beato howled, the witch that pierced her was blasted away. But the wound remained and continued tormenting her with intense pain. Instant she admitted defeat in the second game, this time two blue stakes gouged through Beato's chest. The witch's lungs were gouged and her intestines. The witch's face twisted in anguish. Her body twisted as she gasped in pain. Good. Mm. Again, I have no food in the house, so I'm either gonna have to, go to wobble after this or wait till Duncan's opens in like an hour. The game should be pretty easy to get through with the uh, Ava was the culprit. Theory. And just gonna cut for a second. All right, and I'm back. The coffee was getting to me, so I just got up, did, did what I had to do, and got some more coffee. Nice, good old can of boss. Yeah. At the time, I hypothesized that Gramps was the culprit, and that after killing the other five and stringing the keys along uh, across each room, he instructed his own locked room in the boiler room, where, in the middle of carrying out some kind of scheme, he had an accident which resulted in him burning to death in the boiler. 
But now I've gone and declared that Gramps is already dead. So I've denied my own theory. The irony! However... マスターキー5本は全て5人の使用人の懐より さらに、鍵を見つけたふりをして誰かの死体のポケットから取り出してみせればいいからだ。オッケー。あまい。As she howled in pain, she pulled out the blue wedge that had pierced her right arm. Ito's entire body had been slashed and pierced with blue wedges, stakes, and blades over and over again. And by now, the whole body was covered in blood. But even so, Ito grinned, cackled as though she was enjoying it. Genji. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, different, different fucking fragments, man. Shit happens. いいぜ。それでもいいんだぜ。家族で仲良く大量殺人に手を染めて。決して落ちに血にまみれながら、エンジェのところに帰れよ。それでこそ。魔女の島からの生還者にお似合いだぜ。クズにくエンジンにぴったりで。黙りやがれ。てめえを殺せ。バラバラにして殺せ。命乞いの必要はないぜ。絶対にこの手で最悪の死を与えてやる。そなたならできるだろう。うん。千年の手に。ドラムカムドラム。くすきった笑わに。それに見合う最後を与えてくれるだろう。ああ。それは痛いのか。辛いのか。それとも。くすぐったいのかな。これくらいで答えるかよ。
You sure? That face uh, seems to say otherwise. いらねえようだな。容赦。元より今度は獅子を引き継ぎって第3のゲームの一番最後、南条先生の殺人だけだぞ。うん。おい。わらわ。もうそんなところまで追い詰められる。わらわ。Just a smidge. All right, Battler. Let's see what we got for this one. She coughed violently, spitting up blood. Her insides had been punched through so many times. It's only natural.新実の譲れか。新しき赤き真実で反論するか。新しき。いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや
最初の六人が誰を殺そうかな次の二人はどう殺そうかなもっともっとグロい殺し方はねえかなって考えるのは最高に楽しいぜなあバートラーよ少し改心するから今回も許してくれよそしたらさもうちょっとマシな殺し方に変えてやるからよ You know, the same Beatrice, you know, you fool me once, well, you know, shame on you, or fool me twice, well, you can't fool me twice. It's not verbatim. Ah, man, good old W. I mean, man may be a war criminal, but, uh, at least he was funny. The 18th person X was destroyed, but I won't give in. I'll stop that which is breathe, uh, breathing cold. I almost said breathing, and I'm like, nope, that ain't it. The end of the third game. It's declared in red that the four survivors at that point in time, Battler, Ava, Jessica, and Nanjo, were all unrelated to Nanjo's murder. And it was also declared that he was murdered directly right before his eyes. All other people had the strongest alibi of having their deaths declared in red. Without using the 18th person X, I have to break through this. Think. Don't stop thinking. The red doesn't only bind me. So suppose it's also supposed to break it's also supposed to be her weak point. I somehow use it against her. That's right. There's still a gap. Yeah, this way. I can break through it. Beatrice is the legend of the witch is over. What どういう意味なんじょう先生を殺した時点では生きていた何者かがエヴァの死亡宣言までの間に死亡していればその感激は縫えることになるオッケーつまりはこういうことさエヴァの死亡宣言で初めて死亡とされた人物の中に犯人が
Man, I got a bad habit of doing that. I gotta stop doing it. Even as he said that, it seemed Battler had lost a little of his forcefulness at the extremely pitiful sight. Couldn't help but avert his eyes from a woman exposed in such a brutal fashion. Even if she was his enemy. But even so, unless he destroyed Beatrice, the battle would an end. Batora. Tanomoyo. To let out a sob. I don't know, maybe you should just sit there for a little bit and think about what you've done. <laughs> Say that witches don't exist. Or can't exist. <laughs> Ito's expression was a soggy mess of blood and tears. Certainly, Balor had been tricked by her at one point, so he could probably have suspected her expression and even her tears being an act. However, Battler believed those tears. After all, those tears had the red of truth mixed in with them. <laughs> お前の痛みを終わらせられる。今から全てを捨てさせるから。それが我々の心臓。心臓。And must be fucking twisted and gnarly. Like a fucking lump on a log mixed with a lump of coal. Yeah. Are those tears of pain and torment, or else, either way, a pitiful expression. I mean, that pitiful expression was painful for Battler to look at, even after burning with such anger. What a nice guy. Batra. With her last breaths, Beato summoned up all of her remaining strength and managed to cross both her hands into a fist. Close both her hands into a fist. The red light began to gather at those fists. Then she lifted her arms, as though wishing for something from heaven. Easy peasy. The red light around both her arms got stronger and stronger. She got that far into the word, and then her face tilted to the side a bit. Her right arm lost its light and flopped down. But her left arm alone did not lose its light and remained held up towards the heavens.
Then, before Battler's eyes, another Beato appeared with a faint form, transparent like a curtain. The crucified Beato had already lost consciousness. However, the newly appeared faint Beato quietly looked at me, her eyes expressionless, and spoke in an uncharacteristically polite tone. Oh. I understood. This was the only thing left keeping Beatrice a witch. The final mystery. And Beato was holding it out to me. Entreating me to solve her final mystery and kill her. こういう。お前の最後の謎。俺が受け取ってやる。この島。あなたはたった一人。そしてもちろん。いや。私はあなたではない。何条先生殺しの謎の。あ、だ、ワンオブザウンズワンズウェア。ライクザ、ザネクスト
right to the menu, huh? And do we uh, do we get a title card change, or does that only happen after the uh, after we finish the next one? Nope. All right. Well. That is where we're gonna end it here for today because that was uh, quite a long one. And if if this uh, you know episode four you know question mark is anything like the last one where it's uh, uh, you know it's got quite a bit of meat to it, uh, this video is gonna end up being like five hours long. Which man, no one's got time for that. I don't got time for that. I'm I'm hungry. I, you know I gotta process this video if I can get it ready for upload. And then I'm gonna go to like Dunkin' Donuts or something, get like a bacon, egg, and cheese on a croissant, a croissant. And then if I'm feeling up to it, maybe maybe like a little side of hash browns. Now, Dunkin' Donuts got some good sides, but uh, anyway, you don't care about that. It's making my mouth water. But once again, that is where we're going to end it here for today. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell. See you all next time for the next episode of Movement Necro, where we finish off the very, very last bit of episode four. The last, last smidgen of question arcs before we move on to the answers. Catch you guys then. Later. Bye.